everybody or afternoon there's probably loads in the afternoon but it's morning when i made it uh today we are doing the pelican tote by bagstock which is a free pattern uh but i've done some hacking so in the pattern you have a magnet that closes the bag up instead what i have done is created a recessed zipper pocket um, and then on the inside of the bag i have got a tory pocket which is a zipper pocket on one side and then I've also added a little slip pocket um, and I've divided it into two sections just to make it feel less toty and more handbaggy. It also comes with this fun front zipper pocket as well. Um, and I show you how to line it up so that all your zips are going in the same direction. So if you would like to see how to make this, please stay tuned. All right, so first I want to talk about what I have done to achieve this bag. Uh, so... I've cut the exterior as normal, um, but I have added a few little bits. So the front is normal, in fact the whole exterior is normal, so we can just put all of that in the tub. So the lining is where I've mainly done some changes. So the first thing I did was from the main lining panel as I took two inches off the top and then cut another piece that was three inches wide. So I took off two and then made it three from the pattern so that the top, so once we join this with a half inch seam allowance, it will be the same size, but it gives us a chance to put in a zipper instead. So that's the first thing I did. Then I've cut out my zipper panels. So I've made these two inches wide and 12 inches long. Um, you don't want it the whole length because you've got to remember the bag's going to be a 3D thing, so you needed to make them shorter. Um, the other thing I did was I have done a slip pocket on the inside and I'm doing a Tory pocket as well. So this is literally half a Tory pocket. So the Tory pocket's eight by 12, so these are eight by four. So I've done one exterior and one lining. If your fabric is non-directional, you can actually just cut a Tory pocket piece and then fold it over and that will be the same size. So they are the main differences that I have done to this bag, so that's the Tory pocket there. Um, and I didn't put interfacing on my Tory pocket, I never do, but everything else, all interior has a medium woven and all the exterior has the hefty, which is a Vylene 1050F or HF, or I don't know, I don't remember the number bits. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna start with my handles. So I'm gonna flip them over and grab some double-sided tape, which as you can see, my child's been at. He's got an obsession with this tape. I'm not too sure why. I'm just gonna pat it down, chop it off. You wanna stick it in the middle um, or as close to the middle as you can. And I'm just doing all vinyl handles. You can do them half half. You can do any kind of fancy handle you want really. But I decided that I wanted all vinyl for this one. So we're going to grab both sides and I'm going to bring it into the center like that. Down into the center. Um, if you can't do it like this yet, that's okay. What you do is you draw a line down the middle first and then put the tape on top of that. Um, whatever works for you. Uh, if you can hear ticking in the background, it is my heat press. It does that when it gets hot enough. It starts making weird ticking noises. So, that, and then we're going to fold it over again. I'm going to go up to a four stitch length, because uh, I want it nice and decorative. And then I'm just going to manually hold it in place. And I'm going to start with the open fold side. And I want to... Hold them together and then stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge of the joint. So I'm just going to hold it in place. You can also use uh, clips if you'd prefer, but I ultimately find it quicker to do it this way. Not necessarily easier, but quicker. With practice, it would be quicker this way for you, but feel free to put the clips on until then. And then to make sure that this vinyl doesn't roll, I'm going to go to the other end and then sew down again as well. This will prevent any rolling 
in the vinyl because we're going in the same direction. Now this side should be easier because we don't really have to hold anything. And backstitch. So that's one handle complete. I'm just going to trim off these tails. I'm going to leave it in the machine and then I'm going to grab the second handle and do this. So the reason I'm doing free patterns all week um, is I decided that because Christmas is coming up, now's a really good time to give people handmade gifts. Um, but most people, because of the way the world is, is on like a tight budget. So I thought free patterns might be a good way to celebrate and still be able to give a really cool gift. And there's so many awesome free patterns out there that I just thought I'd go and hunt some down that I haven't done before. Alright, in half, in half again. So we're going to stitch, we're going to back stitch. And then I'm going to chop this one off so it stays out of my way. But see how it's not really curling? Some vinyl, it wouldn't matter. Um, but some of the thinner vinyls tend to curl. All the stretchy vinyls as well, actually. This vinyl I got from an upholstery guy that was closing up shop. Um, I'd love to know where he got it from. It's an awesome colour. And unfortunately, I have no idea. So I'm going to backstitch. I'm going to trim it, pull it out, come up to the other end. And stitch and backstitch. Now what I could have done is I could have chain stitched both the handles at the same time. Probably would have been smart, but... It's all good. And backstitch. So I always like to do my handles first when I've got a full bobbin so that there's no joins. That's why I've started with the handles. Uh, you can also end with them or the next time you do a bobbin change, you could do it then too. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's go with our exterior. So I haven't cut out the corner pieces yet either. I'd just like to point that out. So we're going to need all of them. We need exterior, we need the back piece, I've just realised I'm going to have to pause the video, I forgot to put interfacing on this bit, but we'll get to that. So let's do the easy one, so let's do the back ones. The back one's the taller one that only comes in a solid single piece, uh, so we're going to grab that, and then I'm going to grab two of these that go in opposite directions, so when you put them together they make like a curve. And then we just put the straight edge against the fabric. I go to there, pull that out. I'm gonna stitch, I'm gonna back stitch. We always back stitch, lock your stitches in, help prevent thing comes, things coming undone, which we obviously don't want. So I'm gonna stitch up this edge, I'm gonna back stitch. I'm gonna leave it attached and swivel it, pull this over. Go up to my decorative stitch length and then top stitch it down. And by doing it this way, I don't have as many tails I have to deal with. You also want to make sure that this seam allowance we're stitching over, it's going to help the bag sit flatter. And back stitch. And then all your tails should be at the same end. Oh, love it. So we're going to grab the other one, do the same thing. We're going to go back to adjoining stitch length. So the other option is, is you can stitch these on and then go back and do the top stitching at the same time if you don't like to have to go forward and back as often. Whatever floats your boat. It's your bag, you can make it however you want. And we're going to back stitch. I'm going to crank it up to our top stitch length. Pull it back, make sure it's not stuck on my foot. Trim that off. Alright, so now that I've made the front panel, which is lovely and huge, 
I want to take, now that it's all together, I'm going to take my little, um, what's this called? Dark tracing template, that's what it's called. We're just going to line it up along the two edges like this, and then I'll cut it out. Now, the reason I didn't do this before is because I thought it would annoy me, to be honest, to be kind of flopping around. So I'm doing it now instead. Line it up to the bottom of the side and then trace it out. And then you can grab some scissors and cut it out. Now I use class A scissors for vinyl and I use my Fiskars for all non-vinyl cutting, I guess. Different things work better for different situations. I use these scissors all the time, but with how much cutting I do, they tend to give me blisters. So thicker cutting, these are better. Thinner cutting, these ones are better. All right, so that's that panel done. We will still need this. I mean, you can cut it out now on here if you want to, but I do prefer to wait, personally. Um, so I need to hit pause because I forgot to put interfacing on this. Um, so we're going to do that, and I'll be right back. Okay. I've now put interfacing on there, uh, again with the hefty because it's an outside piece. So we now need some zipper tape. I am using size 5 number, uh, size 5 in black, not number black. And I'm going to singe the end because clearly I forgot to do it last time. So we're going to take the bottom piece first and we're going to take our rose fabric. So the idea is this is non-directional, um, so that's going to work out great. So we're going to pick an edge, we're going to line this up, take some clips. So we're going to do lining right sides up, zipper right sides up, and then the exterior will be right, uh, right side down. So at the top edge, because that's where we want our zip, and then just place it over the top. Now you'll notice I'm not putting my zipper head on yet. There's no need. It will just annoy you, so don't bother. All right. You also notice I'm not cutting off the zip. I will in a minute, I promise. Uh, I just find this quicker than pre-cutting it all. I don't know why, but I do. And then I'm going to back stitch and I just ran out of bobbin thread. That's all right. I have another one. I might need a third. I'm not sure yet. The more you make the same bag, the more you'll figure out how many bobbins and stuff you'll need. But since this is the first time I'm making it and I've altered the pattern, it's really not a known thing. So we'll stitch over. Back stitch at the end, pull it out, trim off the tails. I mean, or you can leave them there, but they annoy me, so I don't plan on it. You should always have a bin just slightly off to the left or right, or at the end of your machine. Mine's at the end of the machine, so I can just push it off the edge of the table and it goes straight into the bin. All right, we will need this later. That's actually probably going to be a good size since I'm making it up. All right, so we're gonna fold both edges away from the zip and then top stitch. Top stitch, uh, sewing length. And back stitch, because we always back stitch. All right, so then we're gonna fold the bottom of this up to join the top edge and see how we're going to create a pocket. Very clever. It's just less seams. You won't have to do the bottom seam anymore. Uh, if you are using directional fabric, you may want to cut this bit in half. Uh, and if you want it the identical size pocket, you'll have to also add a seam allowance. All right, so now I'm going to take my exterior top piece, which I have fussy cut of this. So I wanted to make sure that this cool chick here was on the fabric. Right, so clip it all together like this. We're going to do the same thing again. Joining stitch length. Uh, you're sewing about a quarter of an inch from the edge because you, generally speaking, that's how far the edge of your foot against the zipper tape goes. I don't actually put a zipper foot on. You can if you want to. 
I don't really feel it necessary. So now we're just going to fold up this one, crank it up, top stitch. And I didn't back stitch at the start because I didn't chop it off, so there wasn't any need. But I did back stitch at the end. Trim off the tails, put them in the bin. Now we need one of our zipper pulls. I always like my zips closing to the left. You might want to think about that. So I'm going to open this out so it's flatter. Crack the zip a couple of inches. You're going to crack it the whole way. And then I'm just going to feed both sides in. And I'm going to look down the barrel of the gun. Not that it's a gun, it's a zip. But I'm going to look down to make sure that the things line up. I push my finger up behind it and then just pull it. And I'm going to stop it in the middle. That way it's not going to be in my way. Then I'm going to top stitch over the zip so it can't come undone. Not that I'm super worried, but you should do it anyway. And I'm going to stitch the pocket closed. Now I want all of this to be done within the seam allowance. So I'm just going to do like a quarter of an inch or even an eighth of an inch until you can feel the bottom of the pocket. And then you can start from the other way. You just want to smooth it down to make sure that it is where it needs to be. Back stitch, stiff up, stitch up over the zip, back stitch over the zip, or back stitch in general, and then trim it off. And so now that is a closed zipper pocket. Uh, I'm still not going to move that though because we're not finished sewing. So I'm going to grab my other two side pieces. And again, I haven't cut out the dart yet. I want to wait, make sure I put it in the right spot. So I'm going to line this up, I'm going to stitch and back stitch to lock it in. You might want to stitch slower. I can also stitch over my zipper because it is not a metal zipper. So if you're using a metal zip, um, you might want to make sure that the teeth aren't under the needle. Why your stitch? I don't know why I chopped that. I didn't need to. Oh well. Up to four, and off we go. I'm actually quite disappointed I don't have any more of this vinyl. Alright, other side. So again, right sides together. Stitch, back stitch. Back stitch. Make sure the needle's up for that. Twist around and top stitch. And back stitch. And then I'm going to take my template again. The pen. And I am just using a normal pen, but you don't have to. You can use any kind of pen you want. I find it easier to line up now because it sits properly along the bottom edge like that. And I just find that easier. And it wasn't so floppy as before. And I will need to get up in a minute and pause it to go and iron on the foam. So I'm going to put iron on foam on the back of this to make the bag nice and firm and glorious. So that's those cut out. So that's now our front, which looks awesome. Moving on to the bit where I completely changed the pattern. Let's go to the lining. So the first bit I want to do is my little slip pocket I've decided to make up. So we're going to need one of our main panels to attach said slip pocket. And then we need our little rectangles. Now, ultimately, you can make this whatever size you like. I just chose this because it works for me. So we're going to put right sides together. And I'm going to leave a gap at the top. Or you can leave it at the bottom. doesn't really matter. But you just need to leave a gap so that we can turn it through. So I'm going to start here. And I'm just going to do a quarter inch seam allowance for this. Um, because it'll be fine. Needle down. Pivot it round, down, pivot it round, down, pivot it 
of it. And backstitch. I want to leave a fairly big gap so it's easier to turn through. I'm also going to chop off the excess at the corners. Because I don't really need it there. Push it into the bin. Trim off that tail. And then I'm going to turn it through the gap that we left. And then I'm going to go and iron this so it's beautifully, wonderfully flat. Now, to turn stuff through, I have my flute cleaner, which is my pokey stick. Um, I love this stick for turning things through. I'm just pushing it against the seam. Because it's got such a rounded end, it doesn't push through your stitching, uh, but it's still firm enough that it will push it pretty straight. So that that's without an iron yet. So I'm just going to go and iron that. I'm also going to tuck in this raw edge, keep it straight and iron it down. And I'm also going to take my exterior pieces and go and iron on the foam now. Uh, you won't need to see that. It takes a while, but I use a heat press, but you can use an iron. It just takes longer. Uh, because I've used vinyl, I will be putting it right sides down with the foam on top and then the heat coming through the foam to the bag. So it does take longer, but it's also not going to damage my vinyl, which is quite important. So I'll be right back after I've done the ironing. It's all ironed nice and flat. So now I'm going to top stitch it. So that will both close the pocket and give like a nice top stitching. And back stitch at the end. All right, so now the pocket is shut. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to flip it over and grab my little corner piece because I need to think about where the bottom of the bag will actually be. So I'm going to just draw that, place this, so you want it to be lined up along the bottom and the side. Because technically that will then be the bottom of the bag. So you want to think about that when you're placing your pocket, which is why I'm cutting this out right now. You don't want it too high because you don't want to be tucked up underneath our uh, zipper space. But you don't want it too low so that it's not sitting uh, like in the bottom. So if we just kind of fold that up and pretend like that's where the bottom of the bag will be, you've got to remember you're going to have a zipper up here. You kind of want to center it between those points, I guess. So I'm gonna find the center point on here, make a little snip. We're gonna need it louder anyway, so may as well just do it now. And again, you can fold that up to pretend like you can see where the bottom of the bag is. And then I'm just gonna kinda of sit it in the middle like that. And now I'm gonna to top stitch around all three sides. I'm going to start in this corner. I'm going to do an eighth of an inch top stitching. Now, if you're one that's super rough with your pockets, you might even want to go around and do a double lot of stitching. If you find in normal bags that your pockets fall apart before the bag does, it means you're just rough. So do two lots of stitching and it'll last twice as long, theoretically. Trimming all of my tails. Now that's a good slip pocket. If you want to, you can um, divide it. I'm going to divide it kind of two thirds to one third. That way, if I want to, I can put pens in this side and then this side would fit my phone. Um, or however you want to divide it, that's entirely up to you. That's just how I want to do it. But I'm technically not your boss, so do whatever makes you happy. Slip pocket, one side, done. Next, we're gonna go on to the other side. And we're gonna do that same thing where we trace out the corners. Now I could have done this off camera, definitely could have, but I didn't. Um, I will also put all of the, the alternate stuff that I've done in the description. You don't have to make it this way. It does come with a magnetic snap. 
at the top instead make it even more tote like but i feel like the zipper just gives it a little bit more of a handbaggy feel rather than a totey feel and the fabric definitely screams handbag so and i like to be able to close my bag that's the other thing all right so again we're going to take our tory pocket so when you fold it in half half inch from the top fold should be where your rectangle goes for your zipper so the side that you didn't draw on goes to the top now that's the bottom of the bag there so i'm just going to have this slightly up and in the center now i center myself really dodgy i use my hands but it's never failed me to be honest excellent all right so i'm going to stitch the two long lines but not the short ones i don't do the short ones anymore because it doesn't work out as well if you, your corners aren't as crisp if you do it that way i'm going to spin it 180 degrees stab in the other end i just tighten my tension a little bit Trim all of that off. Tails in the bin. I'm going to put that over there as well. Alright, I'm going to take some scissors. I'm going to fold this in half-ish. Make a little snip so that I can get my scissors in to the hole. Like this. And then I'm cutting both layers. And when I get about about three quarters of an inch from the edge, I'm going to triangle out those corners. And we're going to do the same to the other end. So come down and then triangle them out. It's better to have a long triangle than a short one because a short one you're more likely to miss when you go around top stitching. So I'm just going to finger press that there and there. Then I'm going to take both halves of the pocket, push it through like so um, I'm probably gonna need to iron this because of the type of fabric it is this is actually a sateen fabric uh, which does have a little bit of a stretch not that it'll matter for this um, I just thought it was quite appropriate so right, now that that's down I'm gonna wiggle these corners till they sit flat like that and then I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna give that a nice press so it sits perfectly flat I don't want it to annoy me between now and when we're finished so by ironing it, and I'll use steam as well, it's going to press that really nice and flat for me, and it's going to help. Iron nice and flat. I've now got an 8-inch piece of zipper for, so you just need it the same width as whatever pocket you've done. And we're going to install the zipper pull now. So again, crack it a couple of inches, put one half in, and then I kind of pinch it in place. And then use the other side to guide it in. And maneuver it until it sits evenly within the zipper now this takes a little bit of practice to get good at i used to be terrible at zips if you go and watch my earlier videos all i do is struggle with zips but practice makes perfect in this particular instance so i'm just melting the end of the zip so i'm going to have the zip closing to the left because uh, this is going to be the back wall so all my zippers are going to go the same way then i'm going to just pick this up and place it over the top of the zipper like so making sure that the edge of the zipper lines up with the edge of the pocket and you'll notice that i've put the zipper roughly in the middle i'm going to come this side of the zipper and then stitch around so here stitch back stitch lock it in any needle down pivot around up the edge needle down pivot around and then when we get up to the zipper pull we're going to stop and zip it the rest of the way up that way it's not disturbing the line of the zip at all and it's going to look neater i'm sure i didn't come up with this i'm sure somebody else has done it in a video but i have just this is the way i now do zips because i find ultimately it makes the stitching look nicer So then I'm going to trim off all of those tails. 
And then if you let the pocket fall down, it should pretty much line up perfectly. So I'm not going to stitch the bottom closed yet. I'm going to stitch the sides, making sure that I backstitch. Always. Very rarely do I not backstitch. Line up the edge, stitch, backstitch, up we go, backstitch. The backstitching just locks everything in. Now I, that will be my last seam of the bag, uh, so bear with me on that. So that is now the two walls done. I'm going to do the darts now. So we're going to fold it right sides together. Maybe. Like that. And then I'm just going to stitch and back stitch and stitch and back stitch. Then I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to chain stitch everything. Now whatever seam allowance you do, I actually don't think it matters all that much. You can do a bigger or a smaller seam allowance for this. What you need to remember though is we need to do the same on all the pieces. So that includes the exterior as well. So after I've done these ones, we're going to grab the exterior and do those darts just while we're in a darting mood. Like so. Trim. Done. Oh, of course I left the other one over on the table. It was cooling down. So under we go. We're going to stitch. We're going to back stitch. annoying. I've got to grab the other one in a minute, of which I will when I am ready. So I've made the foam go all the way to the edge of this bag. Uh, if your machine can't handle it, just take off a half an inch all the way around and do that much foam. So when we push it out, that's now half the bag. Alright, moving on. I will get the other one later. So we need our 12 by 2 inch pieces that I am turning into my zipper section. We also need our zipper. I here have got 16 inches. I'm going to chop it down to 14 and a half because I think that's just a little bit long. Um, but you can do whatever. You could have left it. The longer the zip, the more it hangs over the edge. So it just depends on how much extra you like, really. So I'm going to crack the zip at one end. We're going to fold it down. Actually, we don't need to fold it. No. No, we don't need to fold it down. At all. We're going to grab one lining piece. So I've cut two lining, two exterior. We're going to take a lining piece. Line this up here. I'm actually just going to add two clips for the minute. And then I'm going to grab this piece. And line it up here. This is just to make sure that you do everything the right way. So that's what we're going to do. I also forgot we need to fold over our end. That's what I forgot to do. So you need to add some double-sided tape to one end of everything because we're going to tuck it under so that it's neat and glorious so this is the way the lady sits I've actually got her face going through it so we're going to flip this over and you want the double-sided tape so that the whole picture will be facing the correct way I'm just going to make sure that's right so the zipper will hang off here and it'll close up this end so the girl will be facing the right way. So you want it to the right of the picture if you're, you know, putting that much thought into it. If it's non-directional, probably doesn't matter. So we're going to peel off the backing and we're going to make them fold down to 11 and a half inches. We're folding under half an inch. Now the only reason I'm giving out these in these sizes is because it's not in the pattern. Uh, and I always tuck under half an inch at the end. And then there'll be a quarter inch gone at the other, so it's three quarters of an inch smaller than what you cut. 
just if you need to think about that for any reason. Probably should unclip these for a second just so that I can get them right. So I'm lining it up at the 10, which works out as a zero, if you think about it like that. I always put it at like a, a 10 or a 20 or a zero so that I can work out that I'm tucking under the right amount. So I'm going to fold that under like that. Same with this one. So it doesn't matter if you've accidentally cut them wrong so that there's more or less. So long as that you, these are now the same size, that's actually all that matters. So grab an edge, clip it down. So we want the raw edge, the non-folded edge, to be at the edge of the zipper. Like so. Which is why we grab this one and put the folded edge at the same end. And then we want to put this on the opposite edge like this. So now that I've worked that out, I can actually crack it completely apart. I will be using a zipper end for this, but you can also just cut a rectangle or square of vinyl to put on the zipper as well. But I'll be using a zipper end because they're pretty. And I personally think they just make the bag look a little bit more expensive. And I like them. But if you don't have any, that's okay. Just use a rectangle. I used a rectangle for years until I started stocking zip ends. Now I'm obsessed. All right, clear my space. So now we're just going to grab one. And again, it actually probably doesn't matter which one. Actually, I think it does. Hold on. It does matter. So if we're doing that, we're doing that. I'm going to flip them that way so that the pattern will be joining. I'm pretty sure that's right. So when I fold this up, yeah. I am just going to check that. We're going to clip them both together and then I'm going to make sure that I've done it so that the right piece is on the right piece because I'm really trying to think about which way the pattern will sit. So, yeah. Needs more clips. I hope this is right, otherwise I've to unclip everything. I just show, so that will now be there, and that one will be there. And theoretically, that will now join. No, it won't. Okay, so I have put these in the wrong size. If I rejoin that zip, the head's not joined, and that's what I'm trying to achieve here. So, oh, so annoying. All right, this is what I'm trying to achieve. Here's my pretty picture. I need the zip here on this bit. So, usually I get that first go. Apparently my brain's just not functioning. Whatever, it's fine, it's fine. We're gonna do that again. Wouldn't be the first time I've made a mistake. Mistakes are okay, as long as you go back and fix them. I make heaps of mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Nobody asks you to be. Always remember that. Okay, so on the zip, I want these two edges here to be on zipper. So, because I want the zip here. So I'm going to flip that over, and then this edge where I'm touching, I'm going to attach to here. And that's how you work it out. And I should have just done that the first time. But it's fine. Right, and then this one has to go here. So the zip on there. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm also lining it up at this edge first and then putting it in the zipper because that has to be perfectly lined up. It's kind of the whole point of the reason why we made sure everything was the right size and stuff. So now that they're together, I'm still just on a joining stitch length. I am going to stitch across the short edge down and I'm going to stop at the end of the fabric here. Now, ultimately, that end seam that I just did, you can make it any size you want. Any at all. As long as you catch that zipper. 
you have to run over the zipper or it defeats the purpose. So if you have to do a full half inch there, you go ahead and do it. So when I get to the fabric, I'm going to back stitch. And I just pull it out so I can get to the next one. And I'm going to start on where I, the end. And that looks different, but I'm looking from that, that side. Trim that off. Don't know how that happened, but it happens. Something could have stretched. Could have done a multitude of things, if I'm honest. All right, so I'm going to trim off the excess at the corner here. And you can trim off the excess at the edge there as well if you want. Like so. Put all of that in the bin. Then we just flick this out. And your zipper edge is done. And I got it the right way. So what I'm going to do, just to make sure, is I'm actually going to pull this. So I'm going to pull from the zipper and I'm going to clip it. And then I'm going to continue doing that and I'm going to clip it wrong sides together at this edge to make sure that it's all nice and even. Uh, because as you can see, it doesn't want to stay that way. But we need it even because it has to catch all the edges. So I'm just going to keep kind of pulling and tugging on it until it's where I tell it to be. And I want my clips facing the right way along the top edge. Those ones are the wrong way, like that. I'm going to do the same to this one, and then we're going to top stitch all four edges. Um, and we're, we're doing this open edge basically so it's not open anymore. It will sit easier when we try and add it into the bag. So again, more clips. And then just make sure it's all even. You can iron this too if you want to. I won't need to iron it, uh, but you can because it will help it sit flatter without the clips. It's just misbehaving at the moment, but it gets over it eventually. Okay. Dropping everything. So, I want to start at the raw edge so that we don't see our back stitching. So I'm going to stitch up and close the end. And then across the zipper. And this end kind of almost does a bit of a curve because of the zipper. And then we're just going to top stitch this so it's shut. It doesn't have to be neat, we won't see this bit. And backstitch, because we always backstitch. And so now we have a zipper panel. We're going to repeat that with the other side. But I'm going to shut this first. Needle down, top stitch, round the curve, down to the end. I'm going to run out of bobbin thread soon, I can hear it. Okay, so now we have two zipper panels. I mean, you can't see her face, but you get the idea. It's fine. So we're going to take our main body piece. No, not this one, the zipper one. You want the zipper one first. I'm going to explain why. If you always work with what we know. So we know that this zipper goes this way and we know that we want our other zipper to end in the same direction. So then when you look at the front of the bag, all three zippers will close the same way. So first thing we want to do, find the center. So fold it in half, not including the tail of the zip. That is irrelevant at the moment. So we're going to put a clip in the center. We're going to find the center of this one because I didn't do it to this one. I only did it to the other one like that. And then that is going to line up with that there. So the tail is going the same direction as our zip, which will in turn make it go the same direction 
as our exterior zip because this is going to be the back wall. So everything's going to line up. Then we're going to take one of our little three inch pieces that we cut um, and put that right side down to create the rest of the bag. So this will create a recessed zipper slightly in the bag. But because we've got the tail, it's also going to open up completely if you're carrying something large. So it, it all works. I'm also going to take this tail and grab a clip and clip it to itself. And that will prevent it from being in the way for the rest of the bag making experience. Because I don't want it there. All right. And done. We're using a half inch seam allowance for this part because that's how I work out my mats. Uh, you can work out a different mats and do a different seam allowance if you want to, uh, but I'm not, obviously I like half inch. Half inch is easy to work with in my brain. Okay. So now we have a recess zip. Yeah just gonna hang there so now I'm gonna do the other side and then we're nearly out of bag pieces which is pretty exciting so again center of this because we've already got the center of our main panel from earlier like that and then open it out and just line that up there now your zips gonna be going in the opposite direction this time around I'm also going to take this and clip it out of the way. That is an important step, or you are likely to catch that in a seam. Nobody wants to play that game. So, line this up. Stick it under all the clips. Right. And then again, half inch seam allowance. Over the humps. And I just ran out of bobbin thread. Awesome. All right, I'm going to hit pause while I do another one. Okie dokie. Bobbin is done. So I'm just going to come back to a couple of steps back from where I ran out of thread to lock in the old ones and the new ones. And stitch. Probably didn't have to show you that, but I'm doing it anyway. I did uh, grab the other wall and do the uh, darts on this one as well, so that's that done. All right. So now we're gonna pull this up, and we're gonna grab the other one, and we're gonna sew them together, kind of. So the first thing I'm gonna do is line up the darts so that they are sitting beautifully together because that is something in the bag that you will notice. So I'm gonna put one clip on each side of the dart and I'm making sure that the seam allowances go in opposite directions to keep it nice and flat because we want flat. Then I'm gonna put one clip here and one clip here and I'm gonna leave the bottom of the bag open for turning through later because it will be quicker. So now that we've got the dart done, we're gonna to come to this seam here but I am going to push both of those down so that they are going the same direction just because I want them to be pushed down. Then we can grab some more clips and just kind of add them in between if you want to and line up the top edge and put one there as well. So again, we want both of these pushed down and a clip and a clip. You don't have to do this many clips. I actually probably wouldn't if I wasn't recording. I would have put the two here, the two there, and be done with it. But whatever. So that's that one clipped together. I am now also going to do my exterior. So I've got one pushed out and one still in because that's going to be easier to get it to join. And I'm going to flatten these ones out because I can. Now again, this is going to be bulky because I have done vinyl. You also, once you've joined the dart, you then also want to come to where the fabric turns into vinyl 
and line that up because that will be noticeable as well. You want to pick all these points. These are all important points to line up. Um, and it may try to fight you a little bit because of the vinyl and the foam and everything. You, you just got to bear with it. You will get there if you try. So again, I'm doing the dart. Then I'm going to line up the vinyl, which should line up by itself anyway. But it's always good to check. Because the foam, as you can see, is being a little bit difficult. I mean, that's the point. It is supposed to be nice and firm. If it was floppy, I'd actually be more concerned because then you'd have a floppy bag. Which wouldn't necessarily be a problem. It would just be a very different look. So, I don't know. Then I'm starting from the top and I'm just kind of fiddling with it until it lines up and then adding some clips. Now, this one I would definitely clip a lot because... The foam always tries to fight you. So I'll line up that edge. I know it looks like I'm bending the bag, but they are actually the same size. It's just the foam. And the angles with which I'm trying to make it be. Probably not helping my cause very much there. Okay. So, now that we've clipped both of them, I'm going to start with this one. We're going to stitch, we're going to back stitch, and then off we go. So I'm going to stitch through this clip and then back stitch. And then I'm just kind of going to scrunch it up so I don't waste as much bobbin thread. Come to the next clip, stitch, back stitch. And off we go. Don't even look about what's going on over there. We're going to fix it in a minute. Alright. So it looks all scrunchy, but if I just un... or clip those, the crisis is averted. And now I'm going to have a nice decent hole to turn the bag through so let's sew the outer to hit pieces together oops it's with the same seam allowance that we use on the other one i'm just gonna lift it up because apparently it will go through easier if i do this i know you can't see right now but it is a 3d object due to our darts that we did so if you treat it like one it will sew a lot easier. Yeah, something just happened with the bobbin. It got stuck. I felt it. Sometimes it happens. It's like a bobbin backlash. So it turns out almost at the same spot I left the um, gap in the last one, I just had to re-stitch again. still hear my bobbin giving me grief. Stop it. Alright, so I'm going to leave the exterior inside out. Uh, first thing I am going to do though, especially if you're on a domestic machine, you want to take your scissors and trim off the seam allowance here. Because that's going to help with top stitching later. Which I assume the bag has top stitching, and if it doesn't, we're gonna do it. So I'm just trimming off the excess there. Uh, if you want to as well, you can grab your zigzag scissors and just kind of hack at the curve. And I say hack at because there's quite a few layers there that I'm attempting to cut through. And that will just help it to. 
cooperate when we put the lining inside the other one. All right, let's turn this one inside out. Like that. And remember, we've got a big ass hole in the bottom. So now I'm going to open this and I've got the zipper pocket here. So it closes that way. We also need to add our handles in. So I'm going to grab a handle and I'm going to line it up where the vinyl meets. Oh, on the inside, I guess. Put the handles right there. You can measure as well if you want to, but that's where I want my handle. So I'm pulling it out and making sure there's no twists. And then I'm going to just pop it in and line up the other handle. And you can put your handles wherever you want. I've decided there is where I'm doing them because it requires no measuring on my behalf. And I'm going to put the gap towards the inside, uh, which I have done on the other one as well. I do it automatically, but I just thought I should let you know now that I've thought of it. So we're going to hold it. We're putting the join side on the inside, so it's facing the center. And I'm using two clips to hold this in place because one is never enough and it twists. So now I've got handles. So I want, I'm going to grab this again. So my zip is closing here. So now I want this zip to also be closing there. So the zipper panel goes on the opposite panel to where the other zip is. Or you can just look at your top and realize that everything is going the same way. Then I'm going to line up the end seams. Like this. Because if you've done everything correctly, they should be the same. Then we're just going to take the lining and start adding it in to our clips. We're adding more clips. That's our handle. So this has very little hardware. I have made this with three zippers and a zipper end, which again is optional. I just think they're pretty. It's a quick bag, but it's still stylish enough to be a great gift. I, however, will be selling this one. Hopefully it will be somebody else's gorgeous Christmas gift. None of my people are really into skulls. Or if they are, they don't really like big handbags. Okay. Lots and lots of clips. Uh, it doesn't matter how many I use. The answer is officially lots. So, now we're going to stitch all the way around. So I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to do... I'm going to start over here. It doesn't matter where you start, you can start wherever makes you happy. I am going to do a full half inch seam allowance on this though, um, just because I can. I'm not sure what the pattern says, I'll be honest, I didn't read it. Uh, it's either half inch or three eighths. I'm doing half inch. It will ultimately just make the bag a little bit shorter than a three eighths of an inch. And by a little bit, I mean like this much. So you do whatever you feel comfortable with. I like half inch. I've got a little mark on my uh, sewing plate on the machine. So I can just line the edge of the fabric up with that line and off we go. Now you'll see that I'm lifting the bag up. It is a 3D object and I will treat it as such because it will help to get a nice even line all the way around. As you go, you will find it much easier. And we're going to come back and reinforce those handles in a minute. Uh, because personally, I don't think a single line of stitching is enough. So I like to do extra. That's just me. You don't have to do the next step, but I do recommend it. 
It just means that your hand, like, you don't know. If you're selling for a customer or a friend, you don't know how insanely full they pack their bags. And some people literally collect rocks when they go for walks. So if they're going to have a lot of weight, the only thing holding on a handle is that much stitching, which is, what, eight stitches? And I just don't trust that much. We need more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to where the handle is and I'm going to stitch over and then on a slight angle I'm going to back stitch and then I'm going to stitch again. So I'm doing like this crazy zigzag, right? See, it's crazy zigzag, but that has just given me like 30 more stitches to help hold those handles in. So I personally think it's it's worth it. You don't have to do it though. You could have also um, riveted your handles to the outside. Um, you could have made strap adjusters or, you know, whatever. Strap, uh, strap connectors, not strap adjusters. But again, this is a, a fairly cheap bag to make because we've got very little hardware. It's a free pattern, but it looks fabulous. Good choice for a Christmas gift. Not that I don't love bags with lots of hardware, it does look pretty, but it also does add up after a while, and not everybody wants all of that. So, I have done the zigzag on all four handles, so now I'm going to stick my hand into the bottom and grab a corner, I'm going to push it in and then grab it so it's like a puppet, because you actually want like a chunk to be able to grab on to. And then I'm just kind of going to peel, I'm peeling this bag over itself. And then there's the end. So if I scrunch that bag into a tube, and yes, I'm quite rough with my bags, but that's a good. It just proves that they can survive it. And then I'm just pushing everything into that lining. Once the lining is through, you are good to go. I'm just going to come in and push out that seam. See? Lovely and even. And it's just those little details that go from, you know, homemade to handmade. And yes, there is a difference. So, now I'm going to open the zipper pocket, stick my hand through that lining, grab both those sides and pull it just through the zipper pocket. Not even pulling all the lining through. Just enough to be able to stitch it shut. Now you can put clips on it if you want to, but me and lining are, are pretty good friends, so I don't really need to. So we're going to stitch and backstitch, as always. And then I'm going to grab this other end and pull tight, and it should just perfectly line up. That sounds dodgy. I can hear that. But it's so fine, so that makes little to no sense. This is why I don't like this thread anymore. Um, this is a, oh, I think I want to say Seraphil Polyester 40, whereas now I use the Vardman Threads Nylon 40. I don't know. Click it in. Okay, it worked that time. Who knows? Who knows what's wrong with it? All right, I'm going to shove the lining back in. And I want to put on a fabric tag. So I recently got some more fabric tags made because my brother requested them in the shirts that I make him. Uh, and the minimum order was like 100. So I now have 100 fabric tags. They just come as a big long line. You can order them on eBay. Um, I can put a link to the, to the guy I use if you'd like. Um, but he puts little marks so that you can shop them like that. And then they fold in half, and then you just sew it into the seam. So it's just got a little seams legit going on. So I'm going to put one of these in my bag. These are a very cheap way to do it. I think the 100 cost me about $20 with delivery. Uh, and you can buy them bulkier, like more, and they become cheaper. Or whatever you want to do. So... I'm going to put my fingers in and stretch it out so it's flat and then tuck in the raw edges like that. 
And I'm going to put my tag roughly in the center of the pocket. We'll see. So I'm going to stitch and back stitch. Get to roughly the center. And then I'm just going to insert the raw edges of my seam, of my, um, not my seam, my tag. Top stitch her down. And back stitch at the end. I will show you what that looks like. So it sticks out like this. Uh, but in the bottom of a pocket, nobody ever really looks or minds. So if, even though there's like a, a tag right there, it's not going to be in anyone's way enough to want to remove it, which means your stuff will always be available. All right, I'm going to top stitch this so that this is going to sit fabulously. So we need to grab a whole bunch of clips and I'm going to stitch it lining side up. No particular reason, I just am. I could turn the bag inside out and stitch it top side up, or I could go over to my uh, cylinder arm machine and I wouldn't have to turn it inside out and I could stitch it right sides up, but that's not teaching you anything if I go and cheat with my other machines as much as I love them. I do want to start doing some more videos with the cylinder arm because it is a fabulous machine. And I feel like I have convinced a few people that they might want one. Because uh, it's got the walking foot as well. It's a good, it's actually designed to be a bag making machine. So I do want to start doing more bags on it, but I don't want to do too many to discourage people that don't have a non-industrial bag making machine. This is not designed for bags for anyone that doesn't know that already at all. It is designed for clothing at a fast pace. I do bags at a fast pace. It survives because I don't do leather and I don't do too many layers of vinyl. Um, when I do have too many layers, you'll notice that I cut out a lot of the bulk so that this machine can handle it because it's really not meant to do half of what I make it. But it loves me and does it anyway. All right, so I'm gonna stick the bag under like this. And I'm just going to start anywhere. I will kind of want to start more towards the side. I am not going to backstitch. I am going to do a full quarter inch seam allowance because quarter inches are easier than eighth of an inch. Um, and I don't want to slip off. I'm going to go up to a size four stitch length and I am not going to backstitch. This is one of those rare things because we're going to go all the way around. I don't want a bulky chunk of stitching if it's not necessary. So I'm going to stitch this slowly because I don't want to go too fast over all the vinyl layers, especially when we get to like the handles, because I don't want to damage anything. So I'm trying to hold it as flat as possible and I've put half the clips in the wrong way, which is why I have to keep stopping. And again, we're bringing the bag around because it is a 3D object. If you're a domestic, you possibly, oops, possibly could have um, taken out some of the bulk at the side seams if you're struggling to top stitch it down. Just undo your zipper pocket and chop out some of the bulk. Preferably not at the handles if you can help it though, because we did all that zigzagging to make them more stable. So this is another layer of stitching going through those handles as well. So it's now got about five rows of stitching holding that, that in. So that's going to be a lot more sturdier and survive a lot more of a rougher person who may not respect their bags. To be fair, I don't really respect my bags like I should. I throw them in the washing machine if they're dirty. They survive, it's fine. All right, so trim off your tails. When I go back to the start, I just did a couple of little back stitches so that it's nothing too um, in your face and noticeable. So I'm gonna get up close and personal and show you. That is my back stitching. See how gloriously discreet it is? Cause we stitched and then we just did two back stitches and that's it. So we're nearly finished. The last thing we need to do, like the bag, realistically is finished but we need to put on our 
zipper. So we can now take off these clips, and I literally don't take them off till now ever, because they get in the way, especially with the top stitching. So then I'm going to, apparently I still didn't sting it enough, tape my zipper. Now, if you cut your zipper crooked, now's the time to make sure that it doesn't, it doesn't matter about this end. What this end looks like is irrelevant because it's going into some kind of an ending. So you won't see it. What we care about is this being even, which is not yet. So I'm going to put this side in a little bit more. And when I say a little bit, I mean like two teeth more than the other side. Because we want it to sit even. That's better. See how that's now even? So, we've just got this little end. I'm going to tuck it under and under to create a point. And then we just shove that into the zipper end. I'm so classy, I really do just shove it. By folding the zipper into a point, it should go in easier and neater for you. You want to shove it in until it gets all the way to the end. <sighs> my child's been at my stuff again. So we're going to grab a little screwdriver. I'm using this tiny one because my electric one's going walkabouts. These are actually different ends for the electric screwdriver. They are fabulous and they are all slightly magnetized, which makes my life so much easier. And then we just screw this in. Now I might or might not be able to do it with this. I might need the actual container for it yet. So this has got quite a sharp point on the end. Um, so it's actually stabbing through that zip to hold it in place. I'm quite proud of that. I didn't think that was going to work. You want to make sure it's flush. You don't want to be able to feel the thing at all. Oh, and I've got a tail right there. You also want to go around and just make sure you've got all the tails off. We don't want them floating around. There shouldn't be too many out anyway. So now you've got a bag with a zipper section. And see how it's not, it's not too recessed. It's just enough. You also could have done this fabric here in the same as the outer since you do see it but this zip closes here this one closes here and then when you open it up the back one also closes in the same direction whether you do it left or right doesn't really matter the point is that it's all the same so there you go guys free pattern great gift for christmas uh thank you for watching um and i'll see you guys all next time Bye.